Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have all new Dollar Tree DIYs to share with you guys. These are all new Halloween DIYs with a very witchy feel to them. So I love all things witch related, especially around Halloween time, and I had so much fun creating these. But before we get started, if you are new here, I would love for you to join us by subscribing down below. This first DIY, I'm going to be starting with this Pick Your Poison sign from the Dollar Tree. So this is adorable all by itself, but I really loved these potion bottles and I knew I wanted to do something with them. So I just went ahead and I trimmed them off the sign and I also picked up some tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. These are located in their toy department and I just took three out and all I'm going to do is just hot glue them to the back of the potion bottle. So by doing this, it is going to allow the potion bottles to stand up all by themselves and you'll see here that I did glue it on a little bit of a diagonal just to help it stand up nice and straight. And that was it. You can stop right here. Or if you want to cover up those holes like I did, it is super simple. I just grabbed some of the lightweight spackling from the Dollar Tree. And you can just go ahead, take a little bit of this, fill in those holes, let it dry completely, and then you just want to sand it down so it's nice and smooth. And once I did this, I just went ahead and I painted over just the top portion of the bottle. So just that cap right there with the corresponding color for each one. And that was it. The holes were all filled up. They were looking pretty good in my opinion. And I think that these are just so cute. I love these stacked out just like this or kind of like by a cauldron might be really fun, but they have such a beautiful print to them. So really quick and easy, but so cute. Moving on to our next DIY, I picked up this Wicked Wood sign from the Dollar Tree as well as this square sign here. So the print does not matter for this square sign, we just want it to be square pretty much. So any print is okay because we're just going to be peeling off this paper. So if you want to paint on the back, you can just go ahead and leave that paper on the front, but I didn't really want to mess around too much with the staples in the back there. And I figured that if I can get the paper off in just one nice pull, it should be pretty easy to just paint over it. So that is what I did. And to do this, I am just going to be using some white chalk paint. So I'll leave this one linked down below. This is my favorite white chalk paint. I always use it. So now for this wicked sign, I'm just going to be taking out that twine. We are not going to need that. And I'm going to be filling in those holes with the lightweight spackling, just like in the last DIY. I am also going to be using one of these wood cats from this pack from the Dollar Tree and just like before, I'm going to go ahead and fill in that hole with some of the lightweight spackling. So once it was dry, I just took a sanding block, sanded it all down and now I'm going to paint it. So this chalkboard paint is from the Dollar Tree, I picked it up in their crafter square and I'm just going to go ahead and give everything one solid coat of black paint. I'm also going to be using three of the tumbling tower blocks that I used before. So I'm just going to be painting these white with that same chalk paint that I used to paint the square sign, just so they blend into it. So now everything is nice and dry and ready to use. So we are going to be giving our elements a 3D effect. So to do this, I'm going to be taking one of my tumbling tower blocks and just hot gluing it onto the back of the cat. So you'll see here, I kind of placed the block long ways not sure how to describe it but it's easier to see than it is to explain so with the wicked word we are going to be flipping the blocks on their side so that way the wicked is raised a little bit higher than the cat is i really hope that makes sense so to do this i'm just taking one of my blocks here putting some hot glue on the side of it and i'm going to be gluing this one by the w and the i on the back of my sign and then my second block i'm going to be gluing right by the e Adding the blocks behind the word wicked and the cat just really helps to elevate this DIY. It kind of just makes it stand out a bit more and definitely gives it more of a high end look. And plus we are going to be turning this into a light up sign. And by adding those blocks, it's going to give us an area to backlight the sign. And now to turn this into a light up sign, I'm just going to be using some of the fairy lights from Dollar Tree's floral department. So they don't come with batteries, so I did just go ahead and add some batteries, and these are the silver ones. So now I'm going to be taking the top of the strand, holding it in my right hand, 
and I'm gonna start to wrap that strand around the blocks that we glued underneath the word wicket. So it's gonna give us a nice base to just securely attach our strand and that way it kind of hides it. So you're not gonna see it in front of the word. It's just gonna give it a really beautiful glow from behind. Once I reach the end, I just tuck that little beginning piece behind the cat. And now I only have a tiny bit left here, so I'm just going to wrap that around to the back. And now we are going to be securing that battery pack to the back of the sign. So you can actually hot glue this, just make sure you are doing it on the side that doesn't open for the batteries. But I'm actually just going to be using some of these Velcro command strips. I just find that they're pretty easy to use for this and that way if I really want to remove the lights from the sign, it's super easy to do so. So I'm just gonna go ahead, stick them on the back and that is it. Now I can just turn my sign on and off right in the back and it's completely hidden. So here's the sign once we light it up and I think it is just so cool. I love that the lights are pretty hidden but it just gives it such a beautiful glow. this next DIY, I'm going to be using these little wood signs from the Dollar Tree. So I picked up three of the wooden bats and one of the little wood witch hats. So I thought that these were so fun looking because of the slats in them. It was just something different and pretty unique. And I'm just going to go ahead and start to fill in those holes. You guys know the drill already. So once they were nice and dry and sanded down, I just went ahead and I used that same black chalk paint that I just used earlier and I gave everything one coat of black paint. So I was really liking the way that the bats look just like this, so I'm going to leave them as is. But for the witch hat, I wanted to just kind of add an extra element, so I'm just going to be lightly brushing some silver paint over the black. I don't want to cover up the black totally, but just to give it a really fun appearance, the silver helps it pop. And to finish it off, I'm just going to be gluing one of these plastic spiders from the Dollar Tree onto the front. And that is it. It's a really simple DIY. You can even add some of those tumbling tower blocks to the back of this to make it self-standing. I just propped mine up here on some books. And I did just want to mention, in case you are interested in all things spooky and witch related like I am, you might want to check out my last Dollar Tree DIY video. So in it, I've recreated the spell book from Hocus Pocus. I'll leave this video linked down below, but I was so excited to be able to recreate it, especially using Dollar Tree items, and it just pairs so nicely with all of our witch decor. I really hope you guys will love this next DIY as much as I do. So I'm starting off with this little witch leg hanger from the Dollar Tree and I'm also going to be using two of the bath mats from Dollar Tree. So you will probably know already what I'm doing if you are familiar with my channel. We are going to be creating a bath mat pillow. So I think I've done this for almost every holiday. I even made a Halloween one in one of my last videos. It was a flying bat one. But I have to tell you, I love this one so much more. I really like the bat one, but this one was just so cute when it was finished. So I'll be using two of those bath mats as well as some of the yarn from Dollar Tree. This is a no sew pillow DIY. So to attach everything today, I'm just going to be using some hot glue. And I always use my Gorilla Hot Glue sticks for this because it just sticks so well. I will leave these linked down below. I just picked them up from Amazon and they are my absolute favorite. So to start off, I'm just going to take my scissors and cut the top portion of the legs here on the witch. We're not going to need that and then that will kind of leave you with two legs here. And now I just want to position them on my bath mat the way I kind of want them to look in the end result. So I wanted it to look like the witch was kind of taking a step and walking a little bit just to give some movement to it. And if I did not mention before, I'm actually working on the back of the bath mat, so the bottom portion. I just like the textured look of it a lot more than the fuzzy side of the mat. So to attach it here, I'm just going over everything with some hot glue, and you can just take your time with this. The hot glue really does kind of give it a permanent seal, but you just wanna make sure you're getting all of those edges down. And then for the part of the legs that kind of overlapped, I just flipped them over and I glued them to the back portion of my bath mat. Now that the front of the mat is done, we are gonna get started on our tassels. So to do this, I'm just taking that yarn, I'm wrapping it around my four fingers a bunch of times. And now, once I'm happy with the sides of it, I'm just going to trim it off 
and then I'm just going to be cutting off another small piece of twine about eight inches long I would say and I'm going to be using that piece to kind of tie it all together so I'm just putting it underneath my fingers there bringing it up to the top and then I'm going to be putting in about two or three knots and you want to keep those two strands in your hand we need those to attach it to our pillow so now I'm just going to be cutting the bottom portion and the only thing left is to just create the head of the tassel. So to do this, I'm just going to pinch it on my fingers, wrap some more yarn around the head, and then I'm going to cut it off and tie that into a knot just to secure it. And once everything is nice and tied up, you can just pull those ends straight and just give them a trim to make sure that they are all neat. And then I just repeated the same process three more times for a total of four tassels. So now to attach the tassels, I am taking that other bath mat, the one that we did not glue the witch legs onto, and I'm flipping it to the fuzzy side up because this is going to be the inside portion of the pillow. And to attach my tassel, I just put some hot glue in the corner and I'm using those two top strands of the tassel to just push it into the hot glue and secure them into the corners. And now to attach the two pieces together, I'm just going to be putting some hot glue along the edge of my bottom pillow and then just pushing the top portion into that. So this is just going to seal all those edges nice and tight. And I just went ahead and I like to work in small sections that way the glue does not dry out while I'm working my way around. But I did leave a small gap here on the bottom and that is just to fill it up. So to fill my pillow today, I'm just using some polyfill and then I just went ahead and hot glued it closed. These pillows are so fun to make and they're really easy because they are a no so DIY and they just come together so quickly but I love the finished result. So I couldn't do a witch DIY video and not include some spooky potion bottles so that is what we are going to make next. So to do this, I just picked up three of these glass canisters from the Dollar Tree in their kitchen department, and I'm just going to be using this semi-gloss black spray paint to paint just the lids. To make sure I didn't get the seal on the lid dirty, I just used some painter's tape to cover it up, and here are my lids once they were all painted. So I'm just going to go ahead, remove that tape, and now we get to fill up our jars. So to fill mine, I just picked up these spiders and eyeballs from the Dollar Tree. And then for my third jar, I picked up these little mini glitter skulls. You could use anything to fill these jars. They had a whole bunch of spooky fun stuff at Dollar Tree, like some rubber snakes and some really scary centipedes. So those would all be fun in these, but these were just the ones that I picked up today. And now for the last step, I'm just going to be adding some labels to my jars. So these will be available down below in the description box. If you wanted to use these for your jars, I'll leave a link for them down below. You can just print them out for free on my blog. And to attach them, I'm just going to be using some hot glue. And now you're all ready to make your witchy potion. For this next DIY, I'm going to be using these wood ornaments from the Dollar Tree, and I'll be using the cat and the witch hat. Just like before, I'm going to be prepping these by filling in those holes with that lightweight spackle. And then once that is completely dry, I just went ahead and sanded everything smooth. I'm also going to be using some of these tumbling tower blocks again. These are just so good to have on hand. I definitely recommend just keeping these in your crafting drawer because they come in so handy. And now everything is just going to get one coat of that black chalk paint from the Dollar Tree. And I did paint the front and the back of everything. And now to make these 3D figures that can stand all on their own, I'm just going to be taking one of those blocks and gluing it in between two of the figures. So here you can see I decided to glue this block kind of long ways. That way there was a larger negative space in between the two hats. But for the rest of them, I decided to lay the block flat. That way it had a bit more of a slim profile, but it could still stand up all on its own. These little figures are perfect for a tear tray and you can leave them just like this. I think they're adorable looking or you can decorate them and it's so much fun. It's almost like icing a cookie. So I'm just going to be using some gold puffy paint just to 
add some little touches to them so I added some whiskers to one of my cats for one witch hat here I decided to add a really fun spider web pattern which is super simple and it looks a lot harder than it is all you have to do is just make some straight lines and then some arches in between really easy and then I just added a little gold spider at the bottom of the hat you can really take this craft in so many different directions and just get super creative with it. This is also a perfect craft for kids if you want to go ahead and assemble everything for them and then just let them just decorate until their heart is content. I think that they would just get such a kick out of making their own little customized Halloween figure. Another fun idea is to use these as place card holders for a Halloween party and you can just put the name card right in between the two figures. Those are all of the DIYs that I have for you guys today, but I definitely have some more planned so be sure to subscribe down below if you're not yet subscribed and make sure to turn on that notification bell so you're the first to know when I release a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching. To subscribe to my channel, you can just click on my picture right here and be sure to check out this video for some more crafting fun.